<clears throat> Hello guys, this is SCP-453, the scripted mic club. I'm planning to do all scary SCPs this month. And, um, yeah, you can also comment down below which scary SCP I should react to <clears throat> for, um, uh, October. But, um, yeah, remember to comment, like, subscribe, and, uh, let's get into it. The nightlife in Italy is famous worldwide. When the sun goes down, its cities come alive with locals and tourists alike, looking to party, have fun, and sometimes even get a little rowdy. But in an unknown town in Italy, there is a nightclub that offers a very different experience. For those who wander in, they might find themselves playing a role in a drama far more exciting and dangerous than the night out they expected. To the outside viewer, SCP-453 is nothing out of the ordinary. Just a standard nightclub filled with partygoers and revelers evening after evening. As typical as it may seem, the unassuming nature of the venue is nothing short of intentional by design. It is actually a front, owned and operated by Foundation personnel who carefully monitor everyone who comes in and out, keeping a watchful eye for any indication of drama or danger. Violence can and will erupt at any moment, and no matter what, no night at the club is ever routine. But the visitors' chaotic actions are not their own. Though the people's decision to attend the club is of their own free will, after some time settling into the environment, something changes. Over the course of the night, people begin to do things that may otherwise seem out of character for them. Whoa, In fact, the they are playing roles. Though the same roles are played each evening, they are played by different people night after night. Some of these dramas are harmless, but some are violent, and some may even be world-threatening. If the partygoers survive okay. their role in their scripts, they will then leave the club and return home, with only a faint memory of the events they took part in that evening. The next night the process renews and the events will repeat, but not all scripts repeat at the same frequency. Some are regular, while others are only triggered by special circumstances. Only select people take part in these scripts, while the others around them go about their night until triggered to take on a role. And these bizarre performances may have been going on for a very long time. The building now known as SCP-453 may have existed in some form or another even before the Foundation existed, with investigations of the site indicating that it was once a villa of a powerful Roman senator who held extensive parties every night. These pervasive affairs, the odd happenings that occurred during them, may have left a lasting imprint, because no matter what is built on the site, it seems as though people are attracted to the building to party. The Foundation has had possession of the site for a long time, and in a previous attempt to neutralize its chaotic power, they even went as far as demolishing it completely to the ground, but that still proved ineffective. Even when there was no villa or nightclub present, large groups of revelers would still gather. The gatherings would turn into street parties, the street parties into riots. Many times these circumstances were cause for even worse consequences than the regular series of events. The Foundation didn't know how to stop the scripted nightclub, but they could maybe control it. If the people wanted a nightclub, the Foundation would give them one. The site was rebuilt from scratch, and from the outside looking in had all the characteristics of your standard everyday disco watering hole. But really, it was meticulously constructed to be a sophisticated SCP facility, capable of handling whatever anomalous activity was thrown at it. Built from the same materials used in all other SCP containment sites, and always staffed with containment personnel on high alert, ready to handle the more violent and dangerous scripts that may play out at any moment. But control over the scripted nightclub may be more easily said than done. The nightclub has been in operation for a long time, and over the years the staff has noticed some extremely odd events taking place. For instance, certain things aren't always where they're supposed to be. Aspects of the club are built and then slowly shifted to new locations within the site over time. Most notable, the weapons locker on site for staff to suppress violent incidents has slowly been drifting towards the men's restroom and away from the secured section for staff what? only. And it's not the only part of the building slowly shuffling its way about. 
Could SCP-453 be learning to foil the Foundation? And if so, why? While many of the scripts that play out in the nightclub are harmless, some are of more concern. The Foundation has been studying what triggers different scripts, and while some seem to inevitably play out and pull people in, others are triggered by the presence of different guests. The Silver Harlequins will only play out if more than 15 guests are over the age of 60, but there are a few distinct characteristics of the scripts. All begin at approximately 9 p.m. at night, and while people continue behaving in modern ways, there is one key difference. All scripted dialogue takes place entirely in Latin. What? The Foundation believes that these scripts may be playing out events that happened in the initial incarnations of the club back in Roman times. While the players differ, the events always remain the same, and while the scripts rotate, SCP-453 seems to gravitate towards three scripts, all posing unique challenges for the Foundation, and one posing a potential end-of-the-world scenario. First up, Script 43, The Cheating Wife. This is normally the most common script, and poses a relatively small threat to those not actively engaged in the script or outside the nightclub. The main priority is to have the staff's medical team on site and ready to intervene when things get bloody. It begins at 9.49 p.m. when a young woman heads to the men's bathroom. Oh, she will be no. followed by three men. Three? The events of the bathroom are expunged, but a little over an hour later, a fourth male will enter the picture. It's the husband of the woman, and he's not happy. He will enter the nightclub, order a bottle of red wine, and head to the bathroom. There he will brutally assault the three men, knocking all three unconscious Damn. and causing minor brain trauma to the third. He will then drag his wife out of the restroom, cursing her and accusing her of infidelity as he takes her out of the nightclub. The script then terminates, and all participants no longer remember the events beyond a bar fight. Medical attention is recommended for the three men and the woman especially the most severely injured of the men. But after the script concludes, strange events continue to happen. While none of the participants know each other before the script begins and don't maintain memory of the exact events, they display strange behavior. The man playing the husband becomes violent when questioned and develops an obsession with the woman playing his wife. The Foundation believes it wise to keep these two individuals separated. Oddly, SCP-453 seems to prefer men who are shorter and less physically strong than the other men to play the husband. Attempts to short-circuit the script have proved unsuccessful, only delaying it. An attempt to remove the weapon, a wine bottle, has led to the husband using more dangerous weapons like a bar stool instead, which can lead to fatalities. It seems that SCP-453 gets what it wants, and what it wants is for the show to go on. Then there is Script 21, The Senator's Visit. This is considered a higher priority script, and the Foundation knows to be on high alert for medical intervention to prevent fatalities. This one kicks off at 10.13 p.m., as a civilian steps into the club and takes the role of the Senator, the original owner of the villa. He is accompanied by an entourage of 13 servants, each carrying improvised weapons, and when they step in, the club stops dead in anticipation of the coming events, because two people in the club just became assassins. The senator what? and his servants take over a table, and the senator <clears throat> begins ordering extravagant food and drinks. He'll always gravitate towards the most expensive items available from the current stock, and his orders are always completed at specific times, no matter how the Foundation tries to intervene. During his meal, a civilian selected to be an activist will approach the senator and begin criticizing the treatment of the citizens in a nearby city, only to be assaulted brutally by three members of the entourage. The Foundation will take her away for medical treatment after she's left for dead. If you think that's brutal, be prepared, because the senator's night is about to get a whole lot more dangerous. The first of two assassins will then approach the senator, pull a blade, and attack him. The assassin will be intercepted by four servants who will kill him, despite the best efforts of Foundation personnel to prevent the outcome. But it's the second assassin who is of far greater concern. He will incite a brawl among civilians around the eastern wall of the club, then use the chaos to attack seven of the servants as he approaches the senator. Those servants are of priority for medical intervention, 
but the chaos makes it impossible to intercept them until 10 minutes after midnight. The assassin will then engage with the remaining servants, barely surviving, and eventually stab the senator in the neck fatally. The Foundation has been unable to prevent this, and the danger isn't over yet. The fight at the nightclub will continue to escalate, causing more injuries but no more fatalities, until over an hour has passed and 19 civilians take on the role of Roman guards. They'll pacify the crowd and clear the club, this is when the Foundation can finally intervene and treat the wounded. Much like the first smaller scale script, any attempts to interrupt the flow of the events taking place will be unsuccessful and often result in more deaths. None of the large number of participants remember the events, only believing they were in a brutal bar fight. This is one of the most common scripts, and the Foundation's only priority is to try to minimize casualties with quick medical intervention. But one script hints at a much darker event at the club, and that's Script 82, the Plurality Cult. Most scripts begin before midnight and plunge uh -oh. the club into chaos. But if no script has started before then, and the club seems mundane, the Foundation knows to get ready. They'll suit up in riot gear designed to withstand neurotoxins, and claim to the guests that this is part of a theme night. At roughly two hours after midnight, the events will begin with one civilian standing in the center of the room saying, The time of plurality has come. At least half of the other civilians will then join in saying, We embrace the many. But there is something different about this script. Sometimes Foundation staff members will join in. This is the most dangerous script at SCP-453, and staff knows to immediately terminate any Foundation member who has been converted because Intervention 453-82 Pariah is about to begin, and there is no room for error. First, any civilians who did not become engaged in the cult should be immediately evacuated to a safe holding area if possible. The priority then turns to subduing the cultists by any means necessary. The security team should attempt to restrain them and keep them alive, but lethal force may be necessary. The cultists have a priority of their own, though, they will not respond to any attacks by the security team, and will instead begin a Latin chant that ends with their leader laughing hysterically and offering a toast to the club. The club will seemingly return to normal, but the danger is just beginning. Before 2.25 a.m., all the cultists and all civilians must be removed from the premises by any means necessary. If other attempts have failed, the Foundation will release Type 14 neurotoxic gas into the club to eliminate anyone on site, with one exception. The cult leader is not to be harmed under any circumstances. If the cult leader is harmed in any way or the staff has not subdued the cult by 2.30 a.m., the Foundation will trigger a self-destruct mechanism that will eliminate the threat for now. The site's unique properties cannot be stopped, but the script can be stopped in its tracks. The clock cannot be allowed to reach 3 a.m. under any circumstances. More worrisome, this script is becoming more and more frequent. The cycle continues, but the Foundation is focused on containment. The club is to be staffed at all times by bartenders, bouncers, cleaners, and emergency and medical staff, as well as at least 10 security staff members and two observation personnel. All are responsible for studying and memorizing the scripts, and being prepared to handle any scripted events that occur. The site is to be inspected and measured regularly for any changes, and to make sure all its security measures are in working order. The site will be locked every day between 4 a.m. and 8 p.m. to prepare for the night ahead. Because at 8 p.m. on the dot, SCP-453 opens for business, seeking new players for its drama of the night. For another unpredictable building, check out SCP-3008 Trapped in Ikea, or watch SCP-701 The Hanged King's Tragedy for another unconventional dr <clears throat> Well, that's in the video. Um, if you liked that, give a like, comment, and subscribe. And